I'm George Pearson, and these are just a few examples from some of the training videos I have here on YouTube. Now, when you're working with the training, following along the training, if you want to get the materials I used in the training, just go to the description down below and click on the link that's at the top of the description, and this will take you to a page where you can download the materials. Please subscribe, click the like button, and of course, always share on Facebook, Twitter, or wherever. I really appreciate that. Okay, let's go ahead and get started with the video. In this Photoshop Elements tutorial, we'll have a little bit of fun here and do some photo manipulation and create this fairy picture. Now, this is made out of just three pictures. There's a mushroom photograph I have in the background. There's this girl, she's actually jumping on a trampoline, and then I take these wings from a moth. And then, of course, a lot of manipulation to get it to look just like this. Okay, let's go ahead and see how this is done. As you can see, I have a lot of layers over here, a lot of things happening. So it'll take us just a little bit to get through this, but it's all very interesting stuff, I think. Okay, so we'll start off with a brand new file. So file, new, blank file. I have mine set at the default Photoshop element size, which is 6 by 4, 300 pixels per inch, and choose OK. There we go. Now I'm going to get rid of this background. We don't need that any longer. There we are. Now this is made up of a few pictures, so I'll bring in those pictures in here. I have those over here in my recently used file list. First off, I have this mushroom picture here. There we go. And then I have the girl on a trampoline. There she is, right there. And then finally, we have our moth picture in here. I can find where the moth is hiding at. There we go. Okay, so those are the three pictures that make this up. There are links to these pictures in the description and of course also on my project support page for this file. Now the first thing we'll, we'll be doing is setting up the girl, getting the girl ready. Now to do this we'll have to do a careful selection around the girl and this will take a little bit of time to do it properly. We'll be using a few techniques to do that and cleaning up the mask as well, using the selection to make a layer mask and then cleaning up that layer mask. But let's first get her sized properly. So go up here to the ruler. Now this is set in pixels, that's why we have those real large numbers there. It's just the pixel dimensions. Pull this down and come down to the middle of the page. Right there actually happens to be the middle of that picture as well. Now what we want is to have the girl about the height of one half page. So let's grab the corner here, we'll pull her down a little bit and let's see how she fits. Put the bottom of her toe on the bottom of the page and then let's just pull the top up here and just a little readjustment. There we go, so her foot's at the bottom of the page, her finger is touching the middle line of the page and that's the right size for that. We can now get rid of that line, we're done with that. Go up to view and clear guides. Okay, now we need to make a very careful selection around the girl. This is the most difficult part of the whole process and takes the most amount of time. Once this is done, everything else is actually pretty easy. It's a lot of steps, but it's pretty easy. I'll be using the polygonal lasso tool that's up here in the option right down there. Have that set for a new selection. I have mine set at feathering at one pixel. It just softens up the edge just a little bit, which helps that as well. We're doing a little bit of a fine edge. Now, normally my approach on a picture like this is to do a real loose selection using the lasso tool. Just kind of come in around the outside loosely and then use a fine edge to clean up that selection. On this picture though, because of the kind of gauzy effect of her skirt and the background, that just doesn't work out very well. So we'll use the refined edge for around her hair to help us get some transparency on the hair around the hands make that easier and around the toes down there but everything else we'll do it the old-fashioned way which is using the polygonal lasso tool okay now I'm not going to do this whole thing here on camera I'll do part of this show you how I'm approaching this I'll then pause the video for a bit do most of it off screen so you don't need to watch me going through the whole process okay starting off here's my lasso tool and I'll start right here so as this hair comes down meets the arm right there, that's a good starting spot. And I'm just going to very carefully come along and make a 
selection. Now, since we're going to be using this selection to create a layer mask, I can always fix this later on if we need to. So it doesn't need to be absolutely perfect. We will be adjusting that layer mask as the final step on this part of the process. So just come around and just very carefully and slowly make your selection. Now, for the fingers to make this just a little bit faster, I'll use the refined edge for that. So I'm going to come out here, hold the space bar down. You can move the picture like that. Then I'll come out just a little bit like this around the fingers. And then I'll come back in at the wrist and continue on down to make a careful selection around the arm. And again, hold the space bar down, readjust my position, and then continue. Now on the hair, I'll come out here a ways on the hair. We'll use the refined edge to take care of that hair section. And then back down again in tight with this lasso tool to come in and make the rest of this selection. This is the process I'll be using, and I'll pause the video right now, and I'll go ahead and go around this whole thing. And as soon as I have that part of the selection process done, I'll then bring the video back up and we'll then do the refined edge on camera. So I'm just going to pause right now and then I'll be back in just a moment for you and in just a few minutes for me. All right, there we go. There's the whole selection. So the space around the hand, around the hair on both sides, around this hand, and around the toe. We'll use the refined edge on those. So let's zoom in, and we'll start off with the hand over here. Now once you have your selection made, just go up here to Select and Refine Edge. You get this little circle tool right there. You can change the size of that circle right down here where it says Size. And then over here, here's our Refine Edge. We'll be leaving all this other stuff alone. You ignore the Smart Radius and all that edge detection stuff. We want to just use this brush. Now it's a bit large. I'm going to bring the size down here to 25 instead of 35. That's a bit better. Now what you want to do is you want to paint with that, with that plus sign there inside the area outside of what you want to keep. So let's kind of come around like this. And what happens is that Photoshop Elements comes in, re-examines that area for an edge, and then makes a new selection based upon that edge that it finds. Now it's not perfect. We're going to have to clean this up. Right here, there's a bit of overlap in the hand in there, but it does save us some time. Now hold the space bar down and you can then move the picture. Now here, just kind of come along the hair. This will give us some transparency as well, and that will help us with that hair. And space bar down, come down to the toes. I'll come around the foot. This is just a little bit of a time saver. I could do all this by hand, but this is just a little bit faster. And it's really useful where you have strands of hair like that because it does come in and do those as a transparency level. And that's where it really helps. Okay, we'll get the fingers in here. And just get that little bit there. And the hair around the edge here. And that should just about do it. There we go. Now there's going to be problems with this. It's going to have to be cleaned up. This isn't perfect. It never is. What you want to do now is take this, come down here where it says Output, come down to Output 2, and you want to Output to New Layer with Layer Mask. Choose OK. The reason why the layer mask is we can adjust the layer mask. Notice how it was leaving a lot of the outside stuff out here. Don't want to have all that outside stuff in. And with our hand selection, I had a little bit of an edge showing in here as well. So there's a few problems. And there's some transparency up here. If I hide the background, you see a little bit of transparency in there on the finger. So we'll do this in a couple of steps. First off, we want to get rid of this outside excess stuff. So click on the layer mask side. Make sure you see the light blue line around the layer mask itself. Now when you're working on the layer mask, white is going to show more of the picture. Black is going to hide more of the picture. So I want to hide this. So I want to have black. Go to the brush tool and 11 looks pretty good. I'm just going to come in here and just do a quick rough paint out. Just be careful not to go you know, into the fingers or anything, kind of mess up your picture. We're going to come back and clean that up anyway, but just, you know, the more careful you are, the less cleanup you have to do. 
And this is just cleaning up this mask. Standard procedure whenever you make a mask is you're going to have to do some cleanup on the mask. And come in a little bit of cleanup on the hair. Now all this stuff is coming in as a transparency, so it's probably not going to be showing that much, causing as much of a problem on our finished picture anyway, but it's better to do this as nicely as possible. And just kind of work in here and clean up those edges. Now when I'm scrolling like this, I'm just using the wheel on my mouse, the scroll wheel on the mouse. It's a little bit right here along the edge. Now the reason there's a little bit of that edge showing, that's because I had that one pixel feathering. And that will help to blend this into the background. Now there's also a softness on this brush. There's a feathering on the brush as well. So I'm just kind of cutting in just a little bit into the skirt. And that'll go fine. We'll be doing a glow around her figure, and that's going to help to blend this in as well. Okay, coming down here, just a little bit right along that edge there, the foot. A lot down here, as you can see, it was allowing in some of that background noise. That's, again, why I did a lot of this with the regular tool, the lasso, polygon lasso tool, instead of just using refine edge the whole time because it was missing stuff, just because of the quality of that background that this was on. Okay, that's looking pretty good. Hold the space bar down, we can then move this around, look at our edges in here, that all looks fine. Okay, up in here, let's clear up this section here around this little bits of hair. There we go. So this is the first pass on this fix. The second pass, I'm going to hide the white background and we'll look for transparency issues and then clean those up. So I'm first painting outside the figure with black. We're then going to be painting inside the figure with white to firm up any transparency. Okay, just kind of carefully cleaning up that little bit of an edge right there. And again, the glow is going to hide any other little issues as well. Always you know, consider your final output on these things. Okay, hold the space bar down and you can then move it easily. And then just a little more cleanup in here on the hair. And then we're going to go around and do the secondary step on this. If I want to be really, really careful about this, you can come in and you can use the polygonal lasso tool to actually create a new selection and then come in and paint with your new selection. Okay, so just finish up that little touch-ups and there we go. Let's now hide the background and look for transparency problems. You see we have a little bit one right up in here, especially right there. So make sure we switch over to white and you're painting inside the white area here and that allows you to show that part of the picture. So just look for any transparency issues. Like right in along that arm right there hair looks good. That hair looks good in there. That all looks fine. Space bar again to move. A little bit of a transparency issue in there. I'm going to zoom in on this. It's a little bit tight. You can see how there's some transparency happening in there. So let's bring our brush size down. I'll bring it down to about five or so. There we go. And then come in here and paint just over the hand. Now again, I'm painting with white. And white allows me to show black hide. It's white shows and we'll just clean up any little transparency issues in here right along the edge of that arm as well. And we'll check the fingers out. This is a common problem when you're working with the refined edge is that it may give you too much of a transparency. It really does take a careful look after you used it to clean up and make sure that everything is okay. Again, on this one, don't forget we're going to be having a glow around the figure, and that's going to help that effect. And a little bit of transparency along the edge is not going to be a problem because of that glow. But that's just because it's this particular picture. If I was working with a different picture, then the edge may be far more critical. We're just kind of lucking out this time because that glow effect is going to help us on the edges. Okay, that looks pretty good. Let's just scroll down. This is a nice example in here of what the refined edge is good at. Doing this kind of nice 
faded out selections of the hair. That's where it really excels and where you want to use it is on things like hair. Okay, I'll just hold down the space bar and let's kind of walk along the edge here, make sure everything looks good. All looks fine. I think we can add a bit more strength on the legs in here. Again, I have the white. We're on the layer mask and let's just come in and come run along that edge to just thicken up the amount of coverage on that edge. Just getting rid of some of that edge transparency. And just continue this around the whole image. It's probably the last of the bad spots right here. And then the rest is going to be pretty quick to go through. This also is the last of the hard part for the whole picture. This really is it. Once you're past this part, the rest of the picture goes much more easily. Okay, let's just look along this edge. That all looks fine. That hair looks fine. I think maybe along the edge of the arm here just a little bit. And we'll check that clear up to the hand and back around again. And then at that point, we should be fine. Okay, there we go. Just a little bit on this hand. Fingers look okay, actually. So there we go. There's our cleaned up mask. I'll bring the background back in again. And let's just change our view here and we will fit on screen. So there it is. There is the fairy in the right location. Now I want to have this twisted just a little bit. I want her leaning a little bit further forward. So I'll come just outside here and let's just grab that corner and pull it around until it says about 15 degrees, which is right there, 15 degrees. Perfect. Okay, and the position is just about right. If you look at the, the distance between the hands in here, you want about the same distance over there. That's pretty close. So I think we're fine on that. Everything else is okay. And about center, top to bottom, is right about where you want that. Okay, so there's the fairy all taken care of. Let's now look at those wings. Let's just hide that. Bring our photo bin back up again. There we go. We're actually done with this picture. I'll bring this up and we can close that one down. So now we're working with this one. I'm just going to take this, drag the background layer onto our picture. There we go. And we can delete that picture as well. We're done with that one. Let's just leave that out of the way for a second. So we're now going to be taking the wings on this and convert these wings into our fairy wings. So first step is to make a selection on these. I'll just zoom in a little bit. And I'm going to undock. Let's just pull it down and undock that. Now if you can't pull it away, let's like undock it and undock it. If you can't do that, Go up to Edit, come down to Preferences and General, and make sure these two checkboxes are checked. Allow Floating Documents in Expert Mode and Enable Floating Document Window Docking. So make sure that those two are checked. Choose OK. Then you can grab your top bar here, move it up. Notice that, that blue outline. Look at that point. It's docked. Pull it down and it's undocked. That allows you to increase the size of your window. There we go. So we can get a bit larger view and have it all on screen at one time, making it easier to make our selection. Okay, back over here, I'll grab the polygonal lasso tool. We won't be doing a layer mask this time, we'll be actually cutting this out. So now just a nice selection. This is easy selection. You've all noticed my settings the same. We still have that one pixel feathering on there, which is fine. I always leave mine at that setting. Now, when using this tool, don't click too quickly or it's going to collapse the selection on you. You'll have to start over again. So give it a moment between each click, and then you should be fine. We're doing both wings, and we'll then be cutting the wings apart and reshaping them just a little bit after we have them out of the picture here. And come clear down around the bottom of the wing like that, and then follow along the bottom. And then inside part there doesn't really matter. There you go. There's our selection. Let's now go up to Layer, New, Layer via Copy. 
and it gives us a new layer with just the wings on it. We can now hide the moth. That's taken care of. And we can zoom out at this point. There we go. Perfect. Now I want to cut this in half. And we'll do that right here. I'm just going to kind of fake in a bottom for this wing. So I'll start right here. And I'll come down to that point and then just do a little bit of a fake curve there. And then bring that around to about the middle of this bottom left side. And out here, because of course we have transparency on that, and this kind of up and around and then back to your beginning part. There we go. So I'm only being careful right along that edge and putting in a little curve right here. Let's now cut this out to its own layer. So that's a layer, new layer via cut. So that gives us a top wing and a bottom wing. Let's now hide the top wing. And notice on the bottom wing has kind of a bad edge right there. Let's just make a new curve. So I'll start down here someplace. Just kind of you know begin working along my edge. And then in here, I'll just begin making a bit of a curve. And then come back in along the edge again. And then come out. And back to our start point. There's my selection. Hit the delete key. And make sure we're on the right layer. There we go. Hit the delete key. And there we go. Just kind of rounded that out. All right, let's just deselect that. So there's the bottom wing and there's the top wing. Now let's reposition these a bit. I'll pull this on down just a touch. Come outside here. You see that little double curved arrow? And let's pull that around so it's kind of at an angle, kind of like that, and just overlap that. Choose OK. Up to the top wing. And then just outside again. Let's pull that around so it is a bit more of that angle in there, kind of like that. And again, bring the overlap back again. And that positions both of our wings. Now we can do a little bit of colorization on these things. I'm going to back out just a touch again. There we go. And let's adjust our coloration on this. And we'll do that up here. It's the enhance and adjust color, hue saturation. Just take the hue slider and go all the way to the left. There we go. And it gives it kind of these nice blue, purplish, greenish colors. There we go. Okay, down to this layer. Same thing. Enhance. Adjust color. Hue saturation all the way to the left. There we go. That takes care of that. Now, grab these two layers and drag these up to the new layer button. That gives you two copies. Leave those top two selected and then up to image, rotate, and then down here, flip layer horizontal. There we go. And just pull that over to that side. So that gives us our basic fairy wing setup. Now let's bring our fairy back in again. And then select just the wings. We now need to resize the wings and rotate the wings a little bit. So I'll grab the corner. We'll pull those down. And a bit more. I'm just centering them in behind her figure in there. And let's give us a bit of a spin. About, about like that. Let's pull the size down a bit more. I'm just doing this visually. I want to have the this arm in front of that wing, and I want to have this hand just touching the edge. Let me bring the size down just a little bit. There we go. So this hand is just coming out of the edge a little bit in there. And everything else looks pretty good. So it's kind of kind of like that. And that takes care of the basic wing layout. Now I want to bring the opacity down on the wings. They're just a bit too solid. So let's just select all of these layers and just one at a time up here. I'm going to set the opacity here to 50. I might adjust this later. We'll see how things look. But 50, I think, is a pretty good starting point. Okay, so that's a good starting point. Let's now bring the background in so we can see how everything is going to be working out and then begin to adjust some of our effects in here. So back to the photo bin. Here's a mushroom picture. I'll just double click on that and bring that up. 
and let's just float that over here grab the background and drag it into our picture there we go and let's delete that so there's the picture you want to have this one right above your background there so just drag that down and you can see there's the fairy in front of all that that's looking pretty good mushrooms are on the wrong side so let's flip this picture image transform actually rotate there we go and flip layer horizontal and I want to have these two mushrooms on the left hand side and I want to have this all fill over here so we're just going to distort this thing I'm going to grab that handle here I'm just going to pull it over a bit and let's move the mushrooms back about there let's pull this in a bit further and there we go so there is the mushroom picture that one's easy it's actually a perfect picture for this I was just lucky when I found that one okay so there we go that's looking good now there's one problem on the background picture and that's that thing right there's a little stem or something it looks like it's one of her legs that's going to be causing us a problem so let's just hide all the fairy stuff there we go and I want to get rid of that bit there so let's zoom in on that there we are actually a bit too far back up one touch there we go grab the clone stamp I'm just going to copy from here and just paste over there there we go just like that and then a little bit in there and there and it's gone let's zoom back out looks good and we can now bring the fairy back up again and the position is pretty good I might change it a little bit let's just see how things go I'm going to grab the fairy layers and click on the link so I can now move the fairy around a bit so you can then reposition exactly okay so that's all pretty good fairy is pretty good position for us I now want to have the background a lot richer looking so we'll do a couple of things we're first going to put a vignette on this go up to filter correct camera distortion there's a layer we're only looking at this right side of this and where it says vignette and darken pull that clear to the left that just darkens that edge this edge will stay light because we're doing you know this part right in there and choose okay so that darkens that side down now take this drag this layer up to the new layer button and gives us a second copy of that layer on the second copy I'm going to blend this with that background layer and that's normal multiply and that multiplies the colors really darkening things down and then we're going to lighten up that one layer, thin that one layer out a little bit we'll set that at an opacity of 67 percent that's what I used hit the enter key there we go so we're looking pretty good now so we need to have the fairy glowing you need to get the glows in here and the sparkles and then we're all done with this picture so we'll first start off with the fairy girl herself so there's that picture and make sure you have the light blue outline around there and I'll be using an adjustment layer on her to lighten her up so layer new adjustment layer levels and then check here it says use previous layer to create clipping mask she's okay now in here I'm gonna pull the whites over this makes more of the light part of the image white it just pushes everything to the white side because it's that nice glowing effect now the setting that I used for this was 173 so I'll just type that in and then on the midpoint in here I had 1.57 so 1.57 and 73 black is at zero it just kind of fades her a little bit and lightens the figure up and that helps us get ready for our glowing effect now let's put the glow on this figure so come back down make sure you're on the fairy layer right there once it's trampoline and we'll be doing a layer style style settings and we're using a glow here and it's going to be the outer glow you see there's outer glow beginning I'll leave the default yellow which is fine for this let's bring the size up to 78 pixels is what I used and the opacity to 100 
and there it goes. There's a nice glow around her figure. We now need to put a glow on the wings themselves. So let's go back over here. This is the upper left hand wing. And I'll put a glow on that wing. So back up to layer, layer style, style settings. I'll be doing a double glow on the wing. First an inner glow, and we'll also be doing an outer glow. Outer glow, leave that color as is. On the inner glow here, click on the yellow and pull the slider up here till you're in the middle of that light blue band right there. So it's a nice light blue. That becomes our inner glow. So I have an inner glow and an outer glow on this. Now for the inner glow, let's set the size in here at 110 just like that and we'll leave the opacity at 75 and the outer glow set the size at 65 and opacity clear up to a hundred percent that just kind of softens up that edge kind of compared this one to this one just kind of nice soft edge we'll be lightening that up a little bit as well in just a moment here so choose okay there's our layer style on that now I can copy this layer style right click and copy layer style and then click on the next one down right click paste layer style down here right click paste layer style and where layer 2 is right click paste layer style and that just copies that layer style onto all of those wings so that's pretty good now I want to lighten them up a little bit so we'll be doing that with an adjustment layer on that and actually bringing up the brightness of that a little bit with an adjustment layer so let's go up here to layer and layer style actually adjustment layer there we go levels and link this with the previous layer choose OK and if we pull in the slider control here see how this kind of lightens that wing up in there so you get a lighter wing effect that's what we're trying to do here we're just trying to come lighten things up a little bit on that wing now somewhere in around here 190 or so is good so I'm just going to type in 190 on that and that just kind of lightens up and fades out the wing just a little bit and choose okay now I can't just copy this to the rest of these so I'm going to do this step again on each one of the wings so I'll come down here to this layer layer adjustment layer levels link with previous layer choose OK and then set this to 190 hit the enter key close that one there we go come down to our next layer which is this one right there there we go layer 3 and adjustment layer levels link with the layer there we go and 190 close that one and the final layer right here layer 2 same exact steps layer adjustment layer levels click on the link choose OK and set this to 190 and think of this that real nice kind of gossamer look or effect on those wings okay so the wings are done the girls done the background is done all that's okay all we have left to do now is those sparkles in here now that's done on a new layer so go up here to the very very top layer and click a new layer I'll actually be doing two layers on this and you'll see why in just a minute so our first layer let's set our foreground and background colors so go up here to the right in the middle of the light blue in there and come way over here someplace it's just a real light light blue and choose OK click on the background color and come in the middle of the yellows and go right over here to full yellow on that side so light blue and full yellow in their foreground background colors we're now going to be using a special brush so go to the brush tool this is a, one of our default brushes so everybody has this so I'm just going to scroll down way down towards the bottom down here and there we go so we have these kind of grassy things in here and leafy things in here and there's a star shape right in there right below the star shape is this thing now this one is called fuzzball it has a default size of 192 so click on that 
that's what we're going to be using. Double click on the fuzzball. There we go. Set the size to begin with to 87. We'll be adjusting that a couple of times. But that's our beginning setting. Now we need to change the settings on this fuzzball. Click on the brush settings and in here on hue jitter push that clear to the right hand side at 100%. On scatter push it clear to the right hand side at 100%. On spacing we want to have the spacing set at 143 or thereabouts, you know, 143, 145. That's just how far apart they are. And close that. So there we go. Now, when I come in here and click, that gives me a scattered effect on these little sparkle things. Let's do a few down here and then a few up in here. Like that. Just kind of, I'm just kind of following the direction that she's flying in there. And a few more. Okay, so that's pretty good to begin with. Just a few clicks is all you need. Let's now bring the size down to 50 pixels so they're smaller. And put in just a few small ones in here for variety's sake. And then bring this up to 100. And just a couple of clicks, just a few large ones. That gives us a variety of sizes. Okay, that's the first step. Now, I want to erase anything that's over her figure in here. So we're still on our layer and I'm just going to click on this one call this one sparkles. There we are. Sparkles layer. Grab the eraser tool. Now mine's already a pretty good size. 75 and soft brush. That's fine. And then just erase where any of these are going on top of her figure. We don't want any sparkles on her figure. So just kind of erase those off in there. Okay, that looks nice and clean. There's nothing hitting us over here. If you have anything down, you're kind of in those dark areas, get rid of those. I think I'll take that one out. It's a bit much. And I'm just going to cut back just a little bit on the outsides there so it still follows that line pretty well. Okay, so far so good. Now, let's take this sparkles layer and drag it up here to the new layer button, make a copy of that. And I'm going to rename this one Sparkles Blur. There we go. And drag it underneath the sparkles. So it sparkles on top, sparkles blur underneath. We're now going to do a Gaussian blur on this sparkles layer. So filter and blur and Gaussian blur. And mine's still at my setting I had, which was 4.2, anywhere in the 4 to 5 range is fine. It just kind of softens up those sparkles and choose OK. So there we go. It kind of gives a nice softening effect. I don't want them this bright on the blur layer. So I'm going to bring the blur down. Let's bring it down to an opacity of 60%. So I want to have the, the solid ones a bit brighter and the blurs a bit darker and that looks good. OK, now I want to keep the blur ones in her wings but I don't want the bright sparkles in her wings. So go to the sparkles layer, back to the eraser tool, and then just erase over the wing. So it looks like we're seeing those sparkles through her wings. Okay, last little detail touch if you want to. Go back over to your colors and set those at the defaults, set it to white. Back to the paintbrush. Change the paintbrush back to our standard brush up here. I'm just gonna do a 5 pixel soft brush, double click on that. And then we'll zoom in a bit here. I'm just going to put just a few white spots in the middle of some of these. On sparkles, that looks good. I think a little larger on our brush size. Let's see. Okay, that's pretty good. 14, maybe 15 pixels. There we go. And then a couple of clicks there couple down here. I'm just making a few of these a little brighter on their centers. Not too many, just just a few. And that just helps with the kind of sparkling effect. Okay, there we go. Let's now back out again. So there's the whole image. It's all done now. As you can see, we're all set to go. 
and I think I might want to make the wings just a little bit more opaque. So let's go back to our wing layer. Had it set at 50, I'll change this to 60. It's a little a little tweak, but this is the kind of thing you do on these kinds of pictures. You you take it you know as far as you can, then you take a look at it and you think about it for a minute and then you make little tweaks or adjustments until things are just the way you want because they're a little bit brighter on the wings now. But there we go. There is our fairy picture. Let's just now float that and get a larger view of this. There we go. So photo manipulation. We took three pictures. The girl with the trampoline, this mushroom picture in the background, and the wings from a moth. And with some photo manipulation, you have a nice little fairy picture. Thank you for watching this special Photoshop photography project video. Don't forget to subscribe so that you will get first notice of new project videos in the future. Just click on this link right here where it says subscribe here. You can get all 12 project videos in this series along with 26 special videos demonstrating the tools and techniques that I used in these projects by clicking on this link right down here. And then thank you again for watching this 